Boa. The startup scene in Lisbon is unbelievably uh, exciting at the moment. Really creative, some really great projects coming up. And Miguel is here to fill us in a little bit on what is going on and obviously to make himself known to any of you who don't know him so that you can reach out to him afterwards if you have an idea that you think he can help you with. So I'm going to start by saying thank you for joining us, Miguel. I'm very much appreciated. I know that from anecdotal evidence which is our own experience in the network there is a lot of interest from Ireland and particularly in the tech sector in Portugal because of the wonderfully educated um, people who are available the talent that's here and obviously you know you can manage match talent up with lifestyle and you've got the perfect California situation without having to be in California so I'm going to ask you first Miguel to tell us a little bit about your role in Startup Lisboa and what it does. Okay, so good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for having me today. It's my pleasure to share with all of you what is happening here in Lisbon and what we are doing. So as you said, I'm Miguel Fontes. I'm the executive director at Startup Lisboa. And let me start starting precisely explain what is Startup Lisboa. Startup Lisboa is an incubator of startups that was born almost 10 years ago in downtown Lisbon. And it was born in a way that I really uh, always like to highlight because uh, it, uh, it, was, uh, it was born by the will of the citizens of Lisbon. Uh, what I mean, that's um, because we have what we can call the participatory budget. Uh, we had it in that time and we still have it. And 10, more than 10 years ago, it was really 12, almost 12 years ago, the idea to create an incubator here in downtown of Lisbon was one of the projects that was selected and voted by the citizens of, of Lisbon. So that's why we became a non-profit association, because the city of Lisbon, um, with that uh, decision in, uh, in, in their hands, decide to all others to see who wants to join the, the city the city wall to create this new association in town. So Startup Lisboa was born with more two uh, institutions, uh, YAPMAI, that's a public entity that supports small and medium company, and Montepio Geral, a non-private uh, association that uh, wants a, a private bank here in Portugal. In our days, we have three more uh, members of Startup Lisboa, Catholic University, namely through the Interne Entrepreneurship Center that they have for innovation and technology. We also have Roland Berger, a consultancy firm, and uh, also the Delta Cafés, that is a strong brand here in Portugal and in a few countries already also, um, that is related with uh, production and distribution of coffee, uh, the, the main sector. And uh, they became our members because we have with all of them great relationships. Uh, uh, in, and now it's not important for today to explain, but that's why we have this such a diverse group of members uh, at Startup Lisboa. So this is as institutionally, but let me explain what we do. Startup Lisboa, we support, our first mission is to support founders, to support the startups to grow um, their business ideas and their business them, uh, themselves. And uh, what we do is precisely to help them. How we do that? Uh, I used to say that uh, I can explain uh, we, using my, my hand with my five fingers. So first of all, we provide them a very uh, a good, uh, good network of mentors. So access to a mentorship program, it's uh, one of the, the stuff that we, uh, we provide to them. That means that we are obliged to create um, permanently uh, the, the right person, the right people to, that can join this network to help them and can be someone um, f coming from a, a great expertise in a particular market, can be someone that uh, is involved in, I don't know, in other startups with more experience from the academic uh, side. It, it, it's very uh, diverse to be, to be clear. Secondly, we do the same with what we call a network of partners, strategic partners, to give you a few, a few examples, of course, because we are dealing with 
tech companies. Of course, we establish a partnership with, with all the great tech companies that we know. So uh, Microsoft, uh, Amazon Web Service, uh, Google, uh, Cisco, and so on and so on. But also, <clears throat> we imagine law firms so uh, because all of them they have legal needs so we try to establish a few partnerships with strategic partners that can help them when they need it namely providing office hours uh, here at startup lisboa the third pillar of if you want about what we do is related with communication we try to help them to become uh, very well known in the, our community, community in our society. So we help them with the awareness of the project using our social network uh, and uh, helping them also with PR and so on. So, and this is us. And to finalize our presentation, we do also two more uh, things. Um, we put them in contact with investors. Of course, we are in the middle of that kind of relationship when they are in funding, uh, looking for uh, in, in fundraising mode, we try to help them. That means that we know uh, VCs and business angels, and we know their thesis of investment, and we try to do the right match between the needs that the startups they can have and uh, the, the, the investors. Because a few investors, they just invest, as you know, in B2B business model, others, they don't like uh, certain markets, uh, others, they don't like uh, to invest uh, uh, after the first round. Uh, uh, it, it's very heterogeneous again. So what we do is to create the efficiency of that relationship and we try to expose them to uh, a significant number of VCs and business angels. And finally, uh, and we like to highlight this as one of our distinctive points, we try to care about community. We really believe on that, not only because it's a generous idea, but because we really see there a great potential <clears throat> uh, and a great way to accelerate the go-to-market. Uh, and it's easy to understand. Imagine that we have almost 100 startups uh, working uh, here at Startup Lisboa. And of course, they are uh, in different sectors of activity with different uh, business models, using different kinds of technologies. Uh, but sometimes they face the same kind of challenge, the same kind of problems. And if you can create the right environment, the right culture where they feel confident to share, um, of course, they can learn from each other. And that uh, it's great because time, it's the most valuable resource when you are talking about startups. And if you can do in one week uh, something that uh, in other, if it, it, uh, it, it could take for, imagine, one month to solve the same kind of problem just because we can, you can take advantage of the fact to be part of a, a community that helps a lot. So this is us, Startup Lisboa. And sorry for the long introduction, but I think it's important to explain uh, uh, what we do and uh, how we do it. Miguel, you mentioned during that, that little presentation there that you have about 100 startups uh, that you're involved with at the moment. What are the principal sectors that those startups are oriented towards, the, the, the startup Lisboa are working with anyway? Okay, we are agnostic about it when we select them. And historically, I can say that probably tourism sector, uh, retail sector, um, could be uh, two of our um, main pillars, but um, to be honest, in our days we have startups with, I don't know, working in so such a different field. So it's really difficult to describe all the diversity that we have here. But of course, the ecosystem, the local ecosystem, now it's completely different than it was 10 years ago. And we try to specialize a little bit our work. 
for instance, we have our in, in Lisbon now uh, a fintech house. That means that is a community of startups um, uh, related with uh, that are fintech. So they do, we, when we are in contact with someone that is clearly uh, part of that world, what we try to do is put them in contact with fintech house. The same with social impact. For instance, Santa Casa de Misericórdia de Lisboa, uh, a, a charity foundation here in Portugal for the last uh, five centuries, <laughs> um, they create an innovative project called Casa do Impacto, House of Impact, if you want. And they became specialized in this particular field of startups related to what we call social and environment impact. So uh, the first project that they have now started here at Startup Lisboa, but after that we decide to push them <laughs> in the sense that goes because it's important to create that kind of community. Here at Startup Lisboa, it's as I told you, really, um, really diverse, the, the environment that we have in nowadays, but you can find uh, startups that are uh, working in uh, VR, uh, uh, machine learning, uh, of course, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, but also uh, developing uh, e market, um, uh, marketplace. Uh, I know it's really, really, the, uh, I, I, and I'm just talking about because it's uh, three levels of diversity, if you want this the sector, the technology, and the business model. I can say that in terms of business model, the majority of them, they are software as a service, of course, because, because they are software companies. So it's the most often business model, but we also have a few marketplace. And in terms of technology, it's really uh, diverse and the same with the markets with, where they are. And Miguel, in terms of the, the whole Lisbon market, do you think that your experience in Startup Leisure Spoa is reflected across the whole of industry in um, Lisbon? Oh, you mean, what do you mean, Ken? Sorry, so what, what I'm saying is, okay, so Startup Lisboa is involved with, let's say, 100 or so startups. Do you yeah. think that your experience of it is reflected of the overall startup market in Lisbon? That that is what are the principal, what, what you're seeing is just a microcosm of the bigger picture. No, uh, it's it's a good question and a difficult one. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I want to believe that it's, uh, of course, it's a microcosmos, you are right, but it reflects a little bit uh, our landscape in terms of what is the economy of the, of the city. Um, <clears throat> what is happening is that for the last years, we attract a lot of startups to join us here in Lisbon. So our ecosystem in our days, it's not only uh, built based on the local talent, if I can say that, but also uh, with a lot, uh, uh, with a, a significant number of startups that join us in, uh, as in the last few years. So, and we attract a lot of startup coming from, I don't know, it's really, once again, really uh, difficult to characterize because they came from the United States, from Germany, from the United Kingdom, from Spain, uh, uh, from uh, the north of Europe. So it's, uh, uh, and why they are coming? Because they realize that they can hear easily to, to create their products. And that's one of the reasons, but we can come back to this topic after. Um, I don't know if I answer uh, your question, but uh, yeah, that's it. And so with these companies, what, what, how long do you stick with them for? You go in at the very early stage and, and at what point do you hand them off and say, right, you're on your own guys, or you have to, you have to, or, or, or you have to go to the big boys now? Yeah, in terms of uh, mandatory regulations, I would say they cannot stay here for more than five years with us if they combine what we can call a virtual incubation with physical incubation, I explain. So we have headquarters here in downtown of Lisbon and we can provide to a few of them office spaces. But of course, this is not our main uh, mission. Sometimes people, they make a confusion about what means to be an incubator and they think that it's related with the real estate operation. It's not, it's about what I explained to you. That's why we can work with 
with almost 100 startups because more the majority of them they are in what we call virtual incubation and the few they are here with their own office in our headquarters so if, because of the the opportunity that we must provide to others they cannot stay more than three years physically in the office but combine the physical and the virtual incubation they can stay four or five years but what happens in general it's it's a little bit different i explain or they die before that because they are trying to do something really innovative and because it's really innovative of course they are uh, uh, working in uh, in uh, 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 a risk activity, if I can say that. So um, sometimes they don't succeed. It's normal and when you are talking about startups. That's, so that means they don't need to stay for three years to try to validate the product, the idea that they are uh, trying to do. And um, sometimes they grow. Uh, and now I'm talking about the, those who are here physically with us. Um, they grow a lot, so we we are in the, in the old building with small rooms that uh, where they can start when they are just three, four, five, six, seven until almost ten uh, uh, at at the office. But when they grow very quickly, and that happens a lot in the startup world also because it's, we are talking about scalable uh, enterprise. Um, they need to move because they don't, uh, they cannot uh, stay here no longer with us for physical limitation. But they stay, they they stay with us in terms of uh, uh, um, what I call virtual incubation, as I uh, uh, as I explained to you before. So you said obviously you're not involved in real estate, but you are involved actually in a very very exciting project coming up. Would you like to tell us a little bit about the Hub Creative with the Bias, please? <laughs> Yeah, you are right. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought like that like that, but yeah, yeah, we're right. We are really involved in real estate now. Yeah, uh, so let me explain. We, uh, you are talking about Up Creative Dubiat, and for those who doesn't know that, um, starting to explain what is uh, Up Creative Dubiat. Uh, for those who know Lisbon, Up Creative Dubiat, it's uh, located between uh, the old town uh, that ends at nearby Santa Polonia, the train station, and uh, the new part of the city that was born after the Expo 98 uh, nearby the river. So it's uh, very well uh, located, but it's uh, one part of the city that was probably one of the last parts of the city that wasn't yet uh, completely uh, developed in, in the last uh, year. So the mayor of Lisbon, Fernando Dina, he had this idea. Uh, why not to create a year, a huge project that can uh, help Lisbon to be perceived internationally as a city of innovation, of technology of creativity and for that uh, he decides to uh, uh, buy a huge uh, uh, part of the city that was before uh, a old uh, military factory uh, related with uh, food uh, uh, that was called manutenção militar um, and uh, he bought that precisely in order to transform this part of the city um, in this new project related to innovation uh, and technology and entrepreneurship and creativity. And for that, <clears throat> he decided to invite Startup Lisbon to design, first of all, the concept, uh, the, the idea, how we can do that also, the model, uh, the, how we will do it, and that's why we start to uh, work in what we call real estate operations. So we develop the concept, after that the master plan, and we promote that. And now we are uh, in the phase that uh, uh, the work, they started already a, a, a few years ago, two years ago. It depends because it's just to give you the dimension we are talking about. 35,000 square meters uh, and uh, it's 18 buildings and it's um, 
it, it, it was critical to start looking uh, to all the area uh, in the integrate mode, but the, um, it's difficult to do that because, and I explain why, because the, the what I call the hardware of the project, the infrastructure, that means uh, power, uh, electricity, waters, and so on, and connectivity, the outside space, the investment required was provided by the city, uh, the city of Lisbon, but we select after the partners, private partners with good projects to establish them inside of Creative Dubiat, and it's up to them to invest in the, uh, the rehabilitation of the buildings that they will use to base their office, their projects, and so on. So it's a huge project, as you can see, very ambitious and very complex to manage because it's a, a puzzle and we are right in the middle to developing the concept before, also the model of implementation. And now um, uh, at this moment, we have almost uh, all the buildings uh, already uh, placed uh, uh, in, uh, and we decide um, uh, already who will be there. And uh, we define that in three phases. Uh, the first buildings, they will open their doors until the end of this year. And it will be factory coming from Berlin, a huge project, 10,000 square meters, where uh, digital, uh, uh, the digital uh, company from Daimler Group, Mercedes-Benz, they will be uh, with their office. They are already working in Lisbon, but they will be there uh, once the building it will be ready for them. And um, yeah, that's it. And ourselves, Startup Lisboa, we will uh, we'll have also our second building, a, build, a big one inside the Creative Dubiat. So we have two hats at this moment. We are managing the big project, but ourselves will have also a big project for us because it's almost um, 8,000 square meters that we'll have there, uh, not only for startups, but what we call open and collaborative innovation. That means that we are trying to create the right environment where we want to put startups uh, and scale-ups in contact with what we call the corporate world. Because the corporate world, they know uh, that they, they it's no longer possible for them to, to work only with their R&D departments re related uh, about innovation. They need to, to promote what we call open and collaborative innovation. That means they need and they want to be close uh, this uh, kind of environment coming from the startups uh, and the, the, that kind, the kind of atmosphere that you feel when you are talking about startups. And uh, that's what one of the main uh, goals that we have with that Creative Dubiat is precisely to uh, put these two worlds more uh, close, more uh, together, if you want. That's it. And how, you know, in terms of scale, you mentioned that it's 35,000 square meters, but eventually, and you know, looking towards the end of the pandemic, when people, you know, we were just talking about it at the, at the start of the call, but how do you see, you know, a huge project like that, which can accommodate tens of thousands of people, do you actually see it being like a, a lifestyle hub and a, you know, not only just a workplace, but a place to hang out, a place that is, you know, drives other cultural and social innovations, rather than just being the startup scene of, you know, okay, let's, you know, do R&D and technology. Yeah. Um... Uh, even before the pandemic, since the beginning, when we this, uh, developed the, the master plan, we tried to create there something much more than just a working space. So it's a new equipment for the city where will, it will be uh, hosting a lot of, kind of activities uh, and uh, not only space for work. But of course, after this pandemic situation, we uh, had a moment when we saw, well, maybe it will be a problem because they, the, the office, the, 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 the companies, they don't need uh, and they don't want to have that kind of facilities and so on. But what we see now, it's, it, it's, it's not that. They are changing a little bit 
the the conceptualization of the space in the sense that probably certain uh, uh, fit out uh, how do you say uh, certain layouts of the space they are no longer possible imagine the big open spaces with a lot of people working together i would say that it's it, it it's a period it's the end of that kind of uh, spaces but those companies that are looking for new ways of uh, uh, work that means they want to have a mix in what uh, hybrids in between what is uh, uh, remote work with physical presence uh, at the office, they know that they need to have great spaces and they need space for that to create the right atmosphere. Probably they will have more people working remotely, but sometimes they know uh, that people, we are social, we need to be uh, with others, we want to be with others. Uh, so they are preparing their space also uh, uh, already for this new, uh, new era, if I can say that. And um, yeah, that's it basically. Um, the effect of the pandemic uh, uh, in, in a certain moment, of course, we were afraid that could be uh, heavy to manage it. But for now, I would say no. People, they, they saw that it's not possible to stay working like this, uh, each one at home, because we are social. We, we need to, and, we, and the working space is more than just just a working space is where we meet people, where you can have a coffee with a colleague, you go out uh, at lunchtime. So uh, all the socialization that we have uh, when we are working, it's really hard to have that when you are just working from home. So I would say that uh, for sure we'll have what I call, uh, what we call uh, a mix uh, hybrid model but uh, the office, they will be uh, for sure for the next years in the city. <laughs> That's true. And Miguel, the, I know that last year, unfortunately, Lisbon was supposed to be green capital. And obviously that was most of the events and activities as a result were cancelled by the pandemic. But, you know, during the presidency of the European Union, the Portuguese government is still very much focusing on green initiatives and sustainable development. How are you seeing that playing out in the startup scene and how will it be accommodated in somewhere like the Hub Creativo de Piazza? Okay, great question. Yes, it was uh, uh, um, the it, it was a big problem for the city because this year, 2020, was the, the worst year to be the European green capital. But um, re, re answering, answering to your question about creative to be out and sustainability, it was one of our main concerns since the beginning. So we decided in our master plan to have that in count. We try to promote all kind of uh, 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 soft mobility uh, uh, in, in the city, also to promote good practices in terms of the rehabilitation of the buildings, in terms of the using uh, the, of the, uh, the management, the future management of the operations inside the buildings and the entire uh, campus. So sustainability is since the beginning one of our priorities uh, as managers of a creative to be at. And also it's a priority for the city, of course, and for the country. Um, we are all aware that we really need to, uh, to change our way of living and we need to create new habits and, uh, um, and uh, to do this, the, our activities in different uh, and more sustainable ways. And yes, that uh, has a lot of implications in the city. And it's uh, one of the huge debates that we are facing now in the country, and I would say in the cities. And we'll see that uh, very soon because we'll have elections uh, probably in September, September, October for municipalities. And um, I'm sure that it's kind of agenda that will, will come up because um, uh, we are now dealing with that in concrete. It's no longer an idea, it's to, 
you need to uh, to assume some decisions that they are not uh, very easy sometimes when you should decide should i create a, a uh, how do you say that? A cycle bike? Uh, no, bike sorry. Lane. sorry? Cycle lanes? Yeah, uh, for bikes, uh, or you you are still thinking more in terms of uh, a, a city that is driven by cars precisely. And uh, in concrete, uh, you need to take some, you need to prioritize, prioritize your decisions. And it's not easy when you are man managing that in the city because uh, you have different kind of interests that you need to manage to achieve this new green uh, goal that uh, it's a, a mandatory for everyone. But I think for startups, it's very clear. And when they uh, now, uh, when they think about their new business ideas, new business, they started uh, already thinking in sustainable way. That means it's no longer uh, 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 possible to start and think a new idea, a new business without uh, taking that in consideration uh, uh, since the day, the, the day one. So um, I'm very optimistic about the future because what I see, and I see this in the daily base, if you want, is that the new generation of entrepreneurs, they are completely committed uh, and engaged with this uh, the concept of sustainability, and they know that the uh, the customers they they want that, and uh, it's no it will be stupid to create a business without future. So and the future is green for sure, and it's sustainable and it's sustainable. Otherwise, it's no it, it, we don't see future there. So um, that's why I'm very optimistic because uh, in nowadays you, we don't see the divorce between the green and uh, the, the environment if you want and the, the economical rationals uh, they are more and more uh, close and that's one of the big challenge that the startups they are facing and that's why they are creating uh, such a disruption uh, business models this precisely because they try to solve old problems or new problems uh, with new uh, frameworks where sustainability is critical. And you mentioned earlier on, and we see a lot of it in Ireland, and I know it's here too in Portugal, how the universities have such a strong role in driving innovation. And you mentioned earlier on at the start of the presentation that Catholica University, which is a very well-respected university, is part of your um, management structure. Can you tell us what your view is on that integration of um, how, how innovation is being driven by universities and then translates into real life at somewhere like Start Lisboa, where they, when they come out of the, the concept stage and having start really approaching marketability? Yeah, we still have a, a long path to do related with that, but for sure what we have now, it's much better than we had in the past. So that means that all the universities uh, and all the institutions, they are uh, aware of the need to be innovative and to promote, uh, namely entrepreneurship inside their courses, their activities, and they know that uh, it's uh, it's mandatory for them to create the right environment for that. So knowing that or saying that, let me say that it's still a big challenge and it's difficult for them to see how they can uh, do it. So that's why related or close to some uh, university uh, universities, we saw in the last years to uh, born uh, a few kind of institutions that the, the only mission that they have is precisely to try to create spin-offs from uh, researchers and to try to bring the knowledge that is produced uh, in the inside universities to the market, to the society. 
year at Startup Lisboa, um, one of the innovative uh, reasons why we, at that time that we are, were born, was precisely because it was the first incubation in Lisbon that wasn't related with the academical world. Uh, and it, it was much more related with business uh, and not with knowledge, if you want. But doesn't mean that knowledge is not critical, of course, to our ecosystem. And I always like to uh, highlight this idea that it will, it's no, it will be impossible to have the vitality of our uh, ecosystem without um, uh, universities, because we are talking about uh, entrepreneurship that is related with uh, re augmented reality, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, mark, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, all kind of uh, uh, skills that they come from the university. It's not the kind of entrepreneurship that I had a great idea and I'm very smart uh, uh, guy, so let me try to create uh, this business. No, we are talking about uh, 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 business that are, uh, of course, uh, related with innovation, with technology, with knowledge, in, if you want. So um, one of the reasons that we have, uh, that we can attract, as I mentioned before, good uh, projects to Portugal, namely to Lisbon, is because we have, as we said, good universities, namely in the engineering, in the engineering faculties, they are internationally uh, very well placed, but also in management and other fields of the of knowledge. But I would say that for sure, one of the critical aspects that that we should care is this relation with the academic world and uh, because it's mandatory it's mandatory if you want to keep do doing uh, a good a good work here at the city and let me just say because before i forgot to mention that and because we are here with our friends from ireland uh, and it's completely fair to to emphasize this that uh, one of the reasons why the, the ecosystem here is uh, uh, leaving a great momentum, if you want, is because Web Summit joined us in 2016. And of course, it wasn't Web Summit that, was, that create our ecosystem, but brings a lot of international attention to uh, Portugal and to Lisbon and uh, brought a lot of VCs, uh, specialized media, big corporations, uh, great entrepreneurs, and that uh, put us in the international radar of the world, uh, if you want, and that helps a lot, of course. And um, I would like just to, to say that because it's fair <laughs> to mention that here today. <laughs> yeah, we, we all have mixed feelings about Web Summit. I know, I know, sorry. It wasn't a provocation at all. It was just to say that, yeah, uh, uh, Web Summit uh, plays an a, a important role on this strategy, in this global strategy, uh, if you want. Mm -hmm. Indeed. But, you know, Web Summit really got in at the start of, of uh, and created a moment, and it's been really remarkably successful at sustaining it ever since. You mentioned, obviously, the, the Irish connection. How, you know, in your experience and what are you seeing, Ireland had um, very much focused on, you know, inward investment from multinationals for many, many years. And then Enterprise Ireland, our, our version of ICEP, had really, really done an, a, an amazing job at supporting on the ground startups. And they're all looking out towards Europe. Why would countries like Ireland look to Portugal? when they want to expand and find a separate footprint somewhere else in Europe? And why would Lisbon be of particular advantage to them? Yeah, I would say that Lisbon and Portugal, it's, it's, uh, could be relevant for a foreign company, namely from Ireland, not because of the, the market, because the size of our market, our domestic market, it's not very impressive. 
and it, this is one of the good reasons we, why we have such a good startups here in, in, in Portugal is because when they start to think, they need to start thinking globally because they know that it's the domestic market, it's not enough. So why is so Portugal became relevant? Because they can find here, as I told you, good talent and they can based here, imagine the product development, all the, the dimension related to it, the technology, uh, of the, 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 the technological development of the, the, the products and so on. And they can be uh, sailing and uh, operating in other geographies. And what we see in nowadays, it's a little bit that we have a lot of international startups that they are not only based in Lisbon, not, they are not based, only based in Portugal, they decide to come here to attract international talent engineers to join the local teams here in Portugal and they hire local talent also here but of course because they we are talking about international companies they have a, a foot also in the United States or in London or in Berlin or in Dublin of course uh, where they want uh, and where they can and um, this is for me the first uh, and the big reason why someone should look to 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 portugal because it's not of course because of our market uh, only if you think that as a test um, uh, uh, we have the right dimension if you want to test and to validate uh, when you are uh, trying to create new products and new service to a, a global market. And for that, yes, because it's not a such expensive market um, and it's a good market where you can try. And if it if you achieve your success here, maybe, maybe uh, you can do it uh, also in other markets. But the principal reason why people, um, they are looking to Portugal, it's because of what we can call the talent, not only the local, I don't want to be can chauvinist at all, but of course, but because we can buy, we can combine the local talent with the capacity to attract uh, talent to come to Lisbon. And this is because we have, of course, a good infrastructure. Uh, um, we have a very cosmopolitan environment at this moment. It's a very open society. You don't feel at all the kind of problems that unfortunately we see sometimes in other geographies. We don't have that kind of uh, uh, problems at all here in Portugal, in Lisbon. It's really a open society. People, they feel uh, very welcome when they come and yeah that's uh, a, we are always inviting people uh, to come and we we have a, a, a portly sentence that i particularly like that uh, i don't know how to do the right translation but means seja bem vindo quem vier pro bem that means that is everyone that wants to come for good reasons it's welcome for us, something like that, this, this period. And that's the idea, that's the idea. That's why here at Startup Lisboa, let me just say that, we create a soft landing program called Launch in Lisbon, that the idea is precisely to give all the information to an entrepreneur or to a, a startup or SME company when they are thinking, should I stay or should I move to Lisbon? Um, what I need, how, what it will be to create my hunt company there, how it will be the labor market, the, uh, how is the real estate situation, all that kind of uh, um, uh, questions that we have when you are thinking to move and namely when you are coming from outside Schengen because also with the visas and so on so we create a launch a soft landing program that we called launch in Lisbon it's a three-day program when we will with, with partnership with some specialists in all these fields we provide very good workshops and individual sessions to uh, to the participants and because we are in this pandemic situation it became completely digital uh, so it will be in june the next edition let me do my advertising moment 16 to 18 of june 
And if you want, you can go to, uh, to our, our website and we'll find more information about it. But it's a great initiative that we are promoting. And we had very great feedback from the previous editions, from the participants, and it helps a lot. So those who are here today and thinking maybe uh, Portugal can, could be interesting for us, don't hesitate, please, and join us in this program. Great. Thank you, Miguel. I think that brings my questions to the end, but obviously the audience may have some questions. Um, I would like to say that Arnold will share the details of that program on the 16th to the 18th with anybody who's on the call. He'll send a note out afterwards so that you may get more registrations, Miguel, hopefully, from people here. Arnold, is there any p questions on the chat? Because I haven't paid attention to it, I'm afraid. Okay. Uh, no, the... the there are no, no questions, but there was a comment from uh, John. Uh, John participated to a competition with Startup Lisboa, and uh, uh, he says that, you know, it was a very great experience and uh, he's recommending very much uh, Startup Lisboa. So that's uh, that's Thank really you. Great. Thank you. We appreciate uh, that, John. <laughs> uh, otherwise, uh, no, there is no questions. Um, Oh, wait a minute, because now it's coming. Are there grants available to start up in Lisboa for consulting services? Alan Boyle is asking. Uh, he's working with technology companies to help them scale operationally. Uh, and those startups would not typically have the budget for consulting services, hence the question. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's not um, it's not very easy to consultancy providers to sell that kind of service to um, startups because they they don't have the the, the resources, the budget for uh, acquisition that kind of service. Uh, I don't know if it was that question about grants. Uh, I'm not aware of that. Uh, it's not. I'm not very familiarized with that. But I would say um, that it's not the kind of companies that uh, uh, we prioritize. You you prioritize here in Portugal. So uh, our uh, ICEP, our uh, national entity that is uh, always looking for uh, new companies uh, uh, investment coming to Portugal, they are looking, I would say, for other kind of companies. And for that, yes, they have some um, incentives and grants and so on. But Diogo, if Cruz that is here with us today, sorry Diogo to call you to jump in, but maybe Diogo can help me on that. Uh, he's much more aware of this question than I am. Uh, so if you want to add something, please. Hi. <clears throat> Uh, I, I think you're completely right, to my knowledge. Um, incentives specific for for um, for consultancy, there aren't uh, incentives available specifically specifically for consultancy. What what some incentives have, uh, especially European incentives, like um, they might in some cases be allowed to include the expenses of the consultancy in the program but there is not always the case i don't know if uh, pedro teixeira I'm, I'm not just passing the ball around i just <laughs> <laughs> thinking because I, I just saw him and i know he knows a lot of, of uh, he's very knowledgeable so maybe he can add something to this to this subject Hi, Diogo. Thanks. Well, uh, now you are perfectly right. There's no specific programs uh, apart of the European funds for general companies, but specifically for startups, no. Um, we had in the past, uh, last year, I don't know if this year we'll have a second round, uh, what we call uh, startup vouchers, which are small amounts, uh, vouchers from, uh, from the, the, the APMEI uh, Institute. Uh, but it's quite limited, and I think it's not active right now. Uh, we have to follow up those kind of actions from the government, but they are quite limited, as you said. Yes, thank you. Okay, so, yeah, all right. I think that's it. Uh, no more questions. I just uh, I just wanted to know when, when the new uh, hub the Cativo, the, when, when will it be open? And in terms of, of startup, do you have already people um, 
you know ready ready to move to move in or going going there okay so as i told you before at creative dubiat um, we don't have just one date to open it will be organic almost i would say so the first building uh, it will uh, we are counting that they they can open the the, uh, the uh, and starting uh, the activity inside uh, until the end of this year for sure i would say uh, no no before september but probably around that and it will be factory before i i was starting to explain factory it's a, a company that started in berlin precisely creating that kind of right uh, environment to create uh, collaborative innovation uh, where they have great startups with great uh, um, Come, corporate come, uh, corporate world with uh, putting all together and they create a lot the inside the space and they have and they are promoting uh, uh, activities inside the uh, the campus itself and it's a campus inside another campus so factory it will take mm. 10,000 square meters here uh, in Lisbon and the first um, uh, project that they, they will have. It's Mercedes uh, with more than 300 uh, uh, people working there. Um, uh, and it's a, uh, all the strategy that uh, the Daimler Group is uh, developing, namely Mercedes IO, that means uh, the entire uh, tools that they are creating for the digital, um, they it, it's uh, they are already here doing that in Lisbon, and they will move to factory, and it will be before the end of the year. Also, all the food quarter and some service that we'll have inside a Creative Dubiato, they are already uh, in works, and uh, for the same time they will uh, uh, open also uh, their doors and. After that, more two or three uh, buildings, they are they will be um, in conditions to open next year. Uh, but it's a project that takes time. So the last, the third phase, this the last one, it will be uh, even for more at least two, three years. So I would say that before 2025, uh, it will be not concluded, uh, but it's normal, but uh, uh, it's it's like that. That And it was, uh, since the beginning, uh, it was the idea, it, it, not to create all the buildings or to create the creative dubiat in just one single moment, but to do this in these different phases and stages. Okay. Great. Thanks, Arnold. I think we've come to the end of our, our slot here. Miguel, I'd like to thank you so much for your participation this morning and for your very informative um, briefing on what Startup Lisboa are doing, the company Tivo is doing, and overall what the startup scene is looking like in Lisbon. It is extremely exciting, and I think it's going to really flourish once we all get moving around again after this pandemic restrictions are over. I'd like to thank all of you for attending the call this morning. Please reach out to Startup Lisboa if you have questions or you think that they may be able to help you. I think you would very much welcome um, that, Miguel. Um, Sandra on the call sent in a link earlier on and Arnold will also share links later after the call. So if there's nothing else, I'd like to thank you all and see you all again for the next call. Thank you. Hey, let me just thank you. And it was my pleasure to be here with all of you today. And yes, you know where you can find me. So please feel free to do it. Thank you for the invitation. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you, Miguel.